Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you are one of my returning viewers and if you're new, you're very, very welcome and I hope you enjoy all the content that I've got for you. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at how to make this celebratory rainbow look and I will be telling you all about what I am celebrating. So, if you'd like to get a coffee, sit down with me, have a bit of a chat and generally watch me put some colours on my face then please just keep on watching. Okay then, so we're going to start off with my face already uh, prepared. The foundation is KVD Locket Foundation. I've got some um, e.l.f. camo concealer on. I've got a bit of KVD shade and light. I've got a bit of um, Princess Cut Revolution highlighter and a bit of NYX Sweet Cheeks in Boom and Bloom for my blush. For my waterline, which I've already pre-prepared, I've got this absolutely amazing P. Louise and M. 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 Mitchell Acid Rain in the shade Glow Girl. It looks like this. It comes in a tube, like a tube of paint, and it lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts. And you can pretty much do anything you want with it. Paint it on as just a colour. You can blend it in. It blends very well but I've discovered that you can use it in your waterline and it does look amazing. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is start off with my Stacey Marie Love to Haiti palette. And I'll start by telling you some of my news. Um, the big news is that I can't see where I've put my brushes. No, the big news is that I have retired from work. Yeah, I have retired. I am now officially a pensioner. So that's good and exciting. And I will be um, telling you some stories shortly about amusing anecdotes from a life of work. But the first thing, I'm just using the black here, the first thing that I wanted to tell you was that tomorrow, or in fact today, when you're watching this, if you're watching this on Sunday when it goes up, or whenever you're watching this, I will be running, hopefully running, the Brighton Marathon 10K. And that is a 10 kilometer or six mile race which is part of the Brighton Marathon weekend here in Brighton. So it's four years ago now that I ran it before and that was with some ladies who we were going through chemo, some of us. Some of us had just finished chemo and it was something we trained for for quite some time, some months, all through the winter and it was happening in April back then. It, it would have happened in April this year if it hadn't been for the bloody apocalypse. Um, and back then we got on television. I will link um, in the cards the videos that I've done about this and it was quite a difficult race to do. If anybody out there has ever had chemo, you'll know that it just stops everything working and you feel appalling. Anyway, the lovely organisers um, found out that I was doing it and that my husband, lovely, lovely Jonathan, hadn't entered and they gave him a place so he could run with me and look after me and make sure I was okay and that I didn't fall over or you know give up the ghost lung wise or 
just basically so he could be there to help me and of course he did he stuck with me all the way around made sure I was okay and um, yeah one of the many ways in which he supported me during my time when I was ill um, I'm just going in with blackberry from the palette now um, yeah so that was back in 2017 and it just seems like either a lifetime ago or yesterday depending on various things that I don't know what they are but I am running as I say again tomorrow with my friend Jo, my best friend Jo she's the one that wrote the novel the Council Ladies Running Club that you may or may not have heard of if you've been watching any of my videos you definitely will have heard of it because I do nothing but talk about it and that is it there in the background available at all, all good bookshops and on Amazon and in supermarkets um, so yes yeah, so we're running it to raise money for the Sussex Cancer Fund which as you can guess by the name is a fund helping people with cancer in Sussex like us so I will put a link to the Just Giving page in the description in case you have got any spare change down the back of the sofa you want to get rid of you can put it towards our just giving um, to help raise money but um, obviously completely a matter for you here we are going across with the blackberry just trying to blend out the edges a bit it's such a lovely color this one um, so if you are watching this on Sunday morning I will be probably out there as you are watching struggling round attempting to breathe so raise your coffee cup in salute of me if you're if you're watching on Sunday morning and yesterday I retired yes I never have to go back to paid employment now as a matter of necessity which is pretty darn incredible it's really difficult to get your head round actually I mean I've been doing work work for money since I turned 13 which was in 1974 and back then I had a little job in a sweet shop called Skips and I worked there on a Saturday selling sweets, newspapers I'm sure lots of you have had Saturday jobs I then went on to work in a supermarket I also when I was very young worked one summer and this was the summer of 76 when it was just the hottest it's ever been in this country in the UK um, it was a ridiculously hot summer and I worked at a poodle kennels yes I had to hose out the kennels and their runs I had to um, chop up tripe for their food um, I had to take a number of them for a walk all at the same time about five or six I'm just going to go in with, what colour are we going in with? Fruity. Fruity. Um, yes, take them for walks. And then when I got back from doing all that, I had to um, 
help the lady there with blow drying the ones that came in for haircuts and this was in a porter cabin in another building I think it was like a barn or something in the hottest summer known to humanity with big hair dryers big steaming wet poodles sitting there waiting to be blow dried with hair dryers and then we would be <laughs> drying them um, yeah very hot very unpleasant and then after that when I was a little bit older I worked as a what the French call a plongée which is doing the washing up in a restaurant um, I think George Orwell did it. I want to say George Orwell. Um, down and out in Paris and London. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, some one of the authors that we know and love did it. Now, what are we going in with now? We're going in with chilli pepper. And we're going to take chilli pepper from here. And go like this. Yeah, so I did washing up, then I did waitressing, then when I got a bit older I did barmaiding, and then I was a student, and while I was a student in the holidays, I worked in a factory packing walnuts, and we stood up all day long packing these walnuts into little boxes. They used to come in great big giant wooden crates from China and um, you would empty the crates out onto a conveyor belt, a mesh conveyor belt and it would shake the walnuts and if there was any like bizarre insects in the crates they would get shaken through the thing. It was, uh, going in with blaze now um, yeah, so that was um, interesting. And then one day, when I was working there in the holidays, they said, um, right, we're not doing walnuts today, we're doing Angelica. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen Angelica, it goes on cakes, it's like little tiny little green flakes or strips that you use in cake decoration. And what it actually is, is a plant and it grows I mean it's huge it grows like cow parsley so it's like yard yeah yards tall and it comes in and it's already been sugared and syruped and so it's hard and sugary uh, bright green and you have to cut it in half and in half and in half and in half so from something which is like this wide and that tall you end up with tiny little green sugary stems and that's how you make angelica if you didn't know you might have known i don't know what am i going in with now sundown going in with the roof sundown um yeah so there was that i did cleaning um we've all done a bit of cleaning i'm sure in our time um and then after I'd finished being a student, I got my first job in what's called a cutting room. It's where, going in with a bit of mango now, it's where um, in the past when television programs and films were shot on actual film, they used to take them to be edited and physically cut. So I got my first job there and that was in London's Soho district which was uh, very different to what it is now. In fact the whole block that I used to work on it doesn't exist anymore. They've torn it down um, which is pretty sad um, and back in those days it was very disreputable shall we just say. 
all around, all around in the streets and lots of lots of little alleyways there were doorways with cardboard postcards, handwritten signs saying young model please walk up, young model ring bell, new Brazilian model please walk up etc etc. So um, in order not to be mistaken for a young model you would have to go out at lunchtime or whenever you went out to get a sandwich or something carrying a film can under your arm otherwise you would get stopped by chaps going business and you'd go no can't help um, yeah so I'm just going in with a drop of yellow um, yeah so that was Soho back in the day it was different to what it is now it's certainly um, very character building um, I'll say that for it and then I had been taken on as an apprentice and the, the guy um, found some ridiculous excuse why he couldn't take me on permanently and to put another apprentice who was just as cheap as I had been to employ. But uh, yeah, that was that. I'm just going to use my um, Beauty Bay Pastels palette to go in with the shade first light which is also a yellow but it's a much lighter yellow so I'm just gonna take that across there like that so yeah so that was that and then um, after that I couldn't get another job in that industry for love no money it was very sad I um, ended up temping and the temping agency ended up taking me on full time as a what they used to call a temps controller a bit like a fat controller but different and um, so then there was that then there was the time I travelled around America on the Greyhounds on my own um, and then after that I came back and did a number of things and um, got a job working at Sky TV in the West End again selling airtime to advertisers I'm just going to go in with a bit of forest here just put it under here like this and um, yeah that was very interesting learned my skills on reception there I'd done a bit of reception work before but it was that that really helped me and then for reasons that I won't go into I um, left London went back to my village where I grew up did all sorts of jobs there cooking dinners for a retirement home I'm going in with a bit of um, tropics trying to sell ice creams from a walls tricycle barmaiding um, oh you name it I did it and then I got to do a bit of teaching at the school where I had actually gone to school and had been head girl and uh, going in with a bit of key lime and too bizarrely a lot of the teachers that had taught me were still there which was just so weird um, I very much enjoyed teaching but it was very stressful very very stressful I mean ridiculously stressful I don't know how people do it these days but yeah it was mm, cannot tell you um, but then again another move down to Brighton 
with Jonathan who I'd met by then and I got trapped in a call centre for seven years which is you know not as fun as it sounds but there we go just putting a bit of black around the edge there um, I'm just going to use the what colour was this pink lily I think or bloom or no it was fruity wasn't it um, yeah and then we all got made redundant and I did a couple of other things and um, then went temping for the government job that I eventually got permanently and um, became a civil servant and that was 15 years ago <laughs> so you know um, yeah story of my life as it were right um, two seconds while I prepare to do my um, cut crease part and I will be right back so for the cut crease I've used the Revolution Ultimate Eye Base which I really can't say enough nice things about and I'm going to find a fl no not that one a flat brush there we go that's quite flat and I'm going to put some Lagoon which is the sort of bright blue in the palette Ooh, there we go <laughs> blow the fallout off my nose yeah so civil service funny old job it's one of those jobs where some people be, are doing it for the right reasons and they want to serve the public and make sure that everyone is being taken care of and looked after and those people you'll see working their absolute butts off they don't really have ambitions to set the world on fire but they just want to help and they are the people that work over time without getting paid for it work weekends without getting paid for it and they never really get recognised for the work that they do and then there's other people that just seem to be I don't know what they're in it for really because they don't seem to be interested in helping their fellow humans or even their fellow colleagues they just want to get up the glitch up the clip, no, up the uh, slippery, greasy pole, slippery ladder, one of those. And they just, you see them getting promoted and promoted and you can't work out how it's happened. But, you know, they tick boxes, they count the right number of beans and they tick the right boxes. So that was Lagoon, we're going to go in with a bit of Blue Moon on top of that. Um, I will put it on the brush, there we are. Actually I might put a bit of spray on that, let's see. Right, so I'm now going to attempt to use this rather smashing metal finish metallic glitter eyeliner 
in the shade I don't know what it's called um, oh because it's rubbed off that's why uh, by W7 I'm going to put that pretty much I wonder if I can get no I can't get I thought I could get this big flat brush in there but I can't let's get a bunch out there we go put it all over here put it all over here let's just tap it out I do like a bit of sparkle as you know um, so yes yeah, so retirement I mean that was a day ago and I don't I really don't think it's hit me actually because I've been concentrating on the race tomorrow and how nervous I feel and have I got my number, have I got my vest and what time do I have to turn up and you know all that stuff um, I just I haven't I haven't been able to concentrate on thinking about being retired but I'm sure that once I've got over tomorrow and I start thinking about the next phase of my life I will find that there are all sorts of things in store I mean obviously I'll do more running because I'll have time to train during the day I'll be able to go out and I want to start lifting weights actually so um, if anybody's got any tips about lifting weights do let me know um, because I really would like to start doing it because I know it's not that brush the other one I know it's really really good for you as you get older um, to help your bones and your muscles keep your core strong um, so I'm really quite keen to start thinking about that um, I don't know if, if anybody is a, a lifter of weights do please drop me an, a message and tell me how you get on I mean I've got some weights but I, they're quite heavy which sounds really sad but they're 2k g 2 kilogram weights and I find them quite heavy after you know having used them for quite a long period of time they do get quite heavy but that's just probably because I'm a weed but um, in my Pilates class we have half kilogram weights and they seem to be the way to go actually so I might I might get some of those I have to see um, yeah it's all a bit new at the moment because I haven't done weights at all really right all oh, right last bit before I put some eyeliner on I'm going in with my sample beauty pigment in the shade a year what was I saying yeah I'll be training running hopefully lifting some weights if I can get round to it um, I want to do more yoga and pilates on my own um, just drop the little pastels palette um, I want to look at doing a proper jewellery course I want to do more walking with my husband when he eventually retires as well I'm just going to put my eyeliner on now um, but yeah it's all there to be done and eventually we'll go on holiday abroad but it's very difficult at the moment with the old um, apocalypse because there's so much happening that you can't you can't do things and you're not allowed to do things and all that stuff and of course everything's like massively expensive because if people can overcharge you for things they will
I'm just going to put some lipstick on and then I'll put my lashes on and off camera and then I'll come back but I wanted to show you this lipstick it's one of the lovely things that um, Ari got for me you remember when I had my fall and she sent me a big parcel from America and in it was this Black Moon Cosmetics black lipstick and oh, oh my god it smells like whatever angels put in their washing that's what it smells like it's soft it's very thin and yet super opaque see all that on one dip marvellous right I'm just gonna um I'm going to use the some of those lashes I got um, the other day. Do you remember I got some Poundland, not Poundland, what am I talking about? Pound Lashes Lashes. And um, I'm going to use the ones called PL84. So stand by, I'll be right back. So there you have it. Um, as you can see, I've got the Pound Lash Lashes on. I did have put a little bit of mascara on them because they are very wispy and I like to be able to see them. Thank you very much for sticking with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think um, celebrating retiring is the way to go. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure that you do so please because who else would you want to subscribe to? Um, like the video please, even if you haven't liked it, just do it a like for me to help the old algorithms. Um, follow me on all the things. Buy me a coffee if you want to. And I will see you next time. Stay safe. Stay kind. Look after the world where you are. Most of all, everybody, stay strange. Bye for now.